We're Get about to be in for a struggle tonight. Strap in. So, Mr. Young is a Canadian television series that premiered on March 1st, 2011 on YTV, which is a Canadian network. It totaled three seasons and 80 episodes, and at the time, they had stated that Mr. Young was the number one show on their network. Did you know that? I actually didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It centers around Adam Young, who graduated from university at age 14. He then returns to high school as a science teacher to live out the high school experience. Never, ever, ever is any of our criticisms directed towards the actors. The actors actually did a great job for what they're given. We do not know what it was like on set. It could have been an absolute delight. <gasps> our commentary is purely based on the creative decisions made by upper management. The actors... I'm kind of a fan of them. I'm kind of a fan of some of them. <laughs> Not gonna lie. So let's talk to you guys about the cast of characters because it's a really small cast. First character is lovely 14-year-old Adam Young, who is a teacher at Finnegan High School. Where I can get kids excited about science. He's joined by his best friend, Derby Von Derbitsford. Billy McBillyson. <laughs> it's something that somebody who's like really bad at improv but really loud would say. He'd be like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm Bobby McBob Bob. Von Derbitsford. Von, because he's German. And he's the <laughs> and he's the class prankster. You can tell by his expression in this headshot. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Lati. And then there's uh, the girl in the show, Echo Zizzle Swift. And she is basically just Adam's love interest and his student. So. Boing! He says inappropriate things to her during class. Millimeter wave technology to reveal what's hidden under someone's clothing. Who wants to go first, Echo? They're the same age. Yeah. However, there is a power dynamic, clearly, because she has to pass the grade. You wanted to see me after class? Yes. Well, I'm here. Thank you. The next character is Jordan Slab Slabinski, and he is the school bully and my personal favorite character. I do applaud the fact that they named him Slab, like he's a slab of meat. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good decision. <laughs> Hand over my key. Now, why would I want to do that? <laughs> then we got Mr. <laughs> Tater. Who? <laughs> no relation to the talk. Mr. Tater looks a lot like my dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to tell him that. Also, fun fact, the actor who plays Principal Tater was in Mama Mia in the touring company. His catchphrase is, Mommy. <laughs> now there's Ivy Young who is Mr. Young's sister, and she's the fashionista. She is a 75-year-old man's interpretation of a girl from 2005, which this is a show from 2012. Whatever, duh. Why isn't anybody looking at my outfit? Why are you wearing that top? That's what I'm wearing. And she just wears clothes, royalty-free. Clothes like that are royalty-free. <laughs> What were we talking about? And there's Dang. Dang is the mystical, literally magical, Vietnamese janitor. The, the chat is right. <laughs> Sensing a little racism? <laughs> Guys, we have a whole section on it and we're gonna unpack it later. This is Mrs. Byrne and she is canonically in the show like- Thousands of years thousands old. Thousands of years old. And also we stan her. This might be one of the best displays of just give it what you got. Giving everything, playing to the back row. All the episodes of Mr. Young start with Mr. Blank. So uh, we did our numbered list <laughs> in that fashion. Mr. Unbalanced Budget. First thing that you're gonna notice about Mr. Young is that there's only five sets. Finnegan High School Courtyard, the main hallway, Mr. Young's classroom, Mrs. Burns' classroom, and then less often seen, the young household. But here's the thing. Many of the show's plot lines put the characters into situations where they need to be somewhere else, yet that thing takes place in the school's courtyard or hallway. List of things that the Mr. Young cast has done at Finnegan High that should be somewhere else. Gone on a date at a restaurant in the school hallway. Attended a carnival, shot a TV show, hosted a business convention, attended a ballet, built houses for the homeless. 
in the school courtyard. And when they do go outside, the very few times that they go outside of these sets, the sets are like made with foam core. It's not that this show doesn't have a budget. It's that the budget is completely misplaced because they spent all of it on hilariously oversized props. Not like they got like a comically sized phone for a bit they were doing. Everything in this world has to be ginormous. <laughs> Just the two of us sharing our first corn dog. You would think like, let's find a clever way to introduce these giant props. Nope, they just are big. They just like, do it. They don't acknowledge that it's too big a lot of times. <laughs> what prop house right now is taking orders for giant corn dogs, and giant Venus fly traps and like giant croutons? <laughs> these guys cashed out like the richest people in the world. <laughs> And it's Jeff Bezos and then the CEO of whoever makes giant props for Mr. Young. I'm not blind to the fact that I, I, I think they're going for some sort of cartoony universe, but live action. One half of the budget goes to the oversized props and the other half of the budget goes to cleaning up the mess. <laughs> Clean up crew for messy babies. Mr. Messy. They find any way they possibly can to just just get everyone so dirty. I couldn't imagine how long they spend on set because of how messy, ep <laughs> they, they must have like fire hoses. It's the messiest show you've ever seen. One more little burpee. <laughs> Knowing something is gonna be big or someone's gonna get messy, but don't know when, when? <laughs> is probably one of the most invigorating, amazing experiences a viewer can have. The anticipation of going, someone's gonna get messy, and some big prop's gonna pop up, <laughs> and they're like, can you go grab me a donut real quick? And they'll grab a giant donut, <laughs> and they'll be like, this one? And you'll be like, I'm trying to watch my weight. And he goes, oh, this one? And it'll be really tiny. <laughs> And then you turn around and he goes, no, this one comes in with a fire hose and gets everyone super messy. <laughs> Someone's getting drenched in the goop. <laughs> also the budget for like the squibs and rigs that they have to use oh for these. Oh my God, dude, the costumes are all soaked. <laughs> Janitorial company that they paid to clean up. That's mm -hmm. where the budget went. Um, that's a perfect segue actually. Mr. Culturally Insensitive. Let's unpack this, shall we? I'm already read for this. So this show came out in 2011. Dang is the janitor at Finnegan High, and he has the magical ability to appear out of thin air when anybody says his name. But we later find out that it's actually because he's so fast. So when anybody says Dang, he pops up and says, you called? And another cleanup call today. You called? Ah! From what we gather from his backstory in the show, is that he's from a rural farming village in Vietnam where he lived with his parents and his brothers, Ding and Dung. Let's unpack his accent in the show. So the actor who plays Dang, uh, his name is Rogi Yu. Um, he's a Canadian actor born in Montreal. He is theatrically trained. He is an acting professor at New Image College of Fine Arts and he teaches Shakespeare. And this is how they made him speak in season one. Leap on back and pour out here like rice harvest. <laughs> Too bad, brought easier to cream. With the heart which thinks gratefully, us your praise song. <laughs> the school of joy which is valuable does and the duty in the land where the reef monkey reef in brings. This actor has no inkling of this accent in real life. It is used completely as a joke. He's also a mystical figure. Dang is everywhere and nowhere but mostly everywhere. <laughs> but get this, this is actually really interesting. So on September 7th, 2011, Chorus Entertainment's Nelvana Enterprises and Thunderbird Films announced that they had sold Mr. Young to Disney XD to be broadcast in the US, the UK, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. So we're thinking that Disney must have allegedly, this is all alleged, we don't know any facts here. This is our observations only. But they must have thought that Dang's accent was probably too offensive for audiences outside of Canada. So they decided to not, not take it away, but alter it slightly. They took what they thought was the offensive parts out, but only left a weird inflection. You have never rejected slap. I don't think it's going to be that easy. He seems to have 
other interests. They took out him saying his L's as R's, but they left everything else. So they thought that that would be the cure. First time we saw Mr. Young, we saw a, an episode from the second season. And when Dang first showed up, we were like, why is that guy talking like this? You mean after she's dated other guys and realized it's not all about looks and muscles and money? <laughs> And then we saw season one and we were like, wait a second. Something changed in a big way. Props to the actor for giving it everything he's got. Honestly, he kills it with his energy. We stan. We stan. He did a great job. Number four. Mr. Misogynist. Boogie fans, <laughs> boogie. Everyone cozy back there? <laughs> it's about to be a little bumpy. Our lovely little Echo. Echo Zizzle Swift. The way that they treat her in the show is just terrible. <laughs> wow, this exercising is really keeping me awake. <gasps> Not just you. <laughs> I think cheerleading is degrading to women. Actually, I've always wanted to be a cheerleader. That's why you should. Now, come on, let's go and see if we can get you into one of those short little cheerleader skirts. <laughs> go get you in the short cheerleading skirts. The rest of the episode is him trying to make that happen. Actors, not ya, their fault. Not your fault. It's not you, babe. It's the creative <laughs> decisions that were made. So this leads us into what we call the book <laughs> episode. Bounce <laughs> down out. <laughs> That's right. We said the book <laughs> episode. After freezing when Echo asks Adam to join her at the sci-fi convention. Shiny. He creates a serum that will give him more confidence. Unfortunately, it also turns him into a monster. Now Adam must wait for the effects of the serum to wear off while trying to hide his monstrous form from Echo. Becomes a physical form of what we can only assume is a Uh-oh. Smells like pretty. Essentially, when he sees something that makes him feel hormonal, that's not me saying that. The writers called it hormonal. Adjust my hormonal balance. I can make myself more courageous in potentially romantic situations. But the triggers of when he turns into the monster are again, putting Echo, this poor child actress, in these situations. The things they make her say are just horrible. <laughs> Science doesn't believe in ghosts. <laughs> That's very interesting. But how does it answer my question about the female reproductive system? Bow. Down <laughs> out. Down out. I'm uncomfy. I'm going to point something out. I actually don't think the writing is bad in terms of comedy structure. To give it credit, there's actually some legitimately hilarious bits in this. And I, well, <laughs> we've had this debate of <laughs> Aubrey laughs sometimes and we go, well, was that actually funny? Or is it funny because we watched it 50 times? We're, we're watching it from such a different lens that it's now funny. But like the timing isn't totally off. Change that, right? And let's say it wasn't about a monster and a girl talking about her reproductive organs on a children's <laughs> show. Think about the timing of that. Like someone saying something out of context would not <laughs> answer a question. That's a funny format. That's funny. Just you wait, guys. Just you wait. wait. What exactly would we be doing? Hot yoga. <laughs> what? Put on a tight, form-fitting outfit and go into a hot, steamy room. I stretch and contort, sweat drips down every part of your body. <laughs> Could you excuse me for a minute? <laughs> he was so hormonal that he imploded <laughs> a locker. <laughs> That's horrible. They're children. He goes, hot yoga. <laughs> Boom. The bit with the lockers is actually kind of funny, though. Stop! No! <laughs> visually, that's a funny gag. Contextually, it's horrible! Yes, okay. Contextually yeah, wrong, right. visually funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually true. That's That was actually my point, my last point, but. As sweat drips down every inch of your body, like, you're gonna make a kid say that? That's so bad. That's so bad. Now that we're at hot yoga, guys. By the way, this is also yoga happening at the school. At the school. And in Mrs. Byrne's class. Mrs. Byrne is also the yoga teacher because where else would the budget go? Uh -oh. Adam, would you help me? Just grab my leg. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Water? Wait! <laughs> Thanks. Let me 
get you a bottle of water. <laughs> she drinks the serum and she gets a lady hormone explosion. <laughs> You don't know half of the hormones. hormones. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Who said that? Honestly, Emily's Emily. I want to get. Can I gift you a sub for that? <laughs> so so far, the things we've talked about have been horrible, but they haven't been illegal. Number five, Mister Morally and Legally Wrong. That's us about to jump off the plane and we're got our parachutes on. You can only hear the wind. Are you ready? And we're like, with our little helmet and like our GoPro, ready. The episode titled Mr. Younger Man. When Adam's college buddy, a gorgeous 23 year old girl comes to visit, Adam thinks she wants to be more than friends. Rocket man, I know you well. His 23 year old college buddy's coming to town. You know. The one that's gonna stay over? At his house? Get an Airbnb, question mark? You're an adult, question mark? By the way, guys, this is in the first season within the first five episodes of the show. Yeah, this is what got sold to Disney. And Disney saw this and went, give it. They went. <laughs> I meant like licking their chops like this is gonna be a money maker. <laughs> oh, I see. Mr. <laughs> Younger Man. My feet are frozen to the floor. Jim has a trampoline? I love Trampoline! <laughs> Who needs feet? So bouncy? Do a little bounce? They wrote that. Derby accidentally cemented his feet to the ground. And he's like frustrated that he's stuck and he can't go watch. Because I want to watch girls jump on trampolines. <laughs> Weirdo. Why is that in the show? Oh, you made the guest bed up with Stephen Hawking sheets. You're so sweet. Stephen Stephen Hawking sheets. Also, they just have his face wait, all over wait, them. Wait, is there Stephen Hawking merch? <laughs> also, he goes like this. She goes, "Thank you for the Stephen Hawking sheets." <laughs> and then she falls on him. Whoa! Okay, so the planetarium. It's a date. Hi, honey. It's my boyfriend. Hi, honey. It's my boyfriend. Doesn't know this kid. Why would you say that out loud? The boyfriend's like, how you, how you doing? How's it been? She's like, oh, I'm just staying with this 14 year old boy that I'm way too touchy, even if we were friends with. Let's keep going, shall we? So they go to the planetarium, by the way. This is the planetarium. This is the planetarium. Check out the set of the planetarium. Oh, these are great seats. We got the best seat out of all nine seats here. <laughs> got the best office chairs out of all the office chairs at the back of Office Depot. The laser show was two Spencer's disco balls. Come on, spend 50 bucks. You remember? Of course. Squeeze. By the way, that's my edit. Aubrey did emphasize that. That wasn't in the show. To a place most men only dream. Women dream of it too. <laughs> Women no... dream about it too. With her legs out, house down boots, high heels, going out to the show. A voiceover in the planetarium is like, we will go where no man has ever gone before. Prepare to get closer to a heavenly body than you've ever been before. <laughs> Hey, are you okay? You're sweating. What? Uh-oh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Couple so things So Derby happen. is messing around, trying to get Adam not to kiss this woman because she has a boyfriend. Not because she's an adult. Right. There's nothing worse on earth than a <laughs> cheating girlfriend. The lasers shot him in the face. <laughs> and while the lasers shot him in the face, please look at the actress that thinks it's a freeze frame. And she goes, what does that even mean? What does it mean? It froze her? Zapped. She didn't she got, get zapped though. She, oh, he got he zapped. He got zapped. And, and she, she went, went. Derby in this episode got to the control room, which I'd like to think he like just killed somebody and then he got that like. <laughs> Von I'm Dur Von Derbit's foot. So I'm Von Derbit's foot. <laughs> now to get this girl to not cheat on her boyfriend. <laughs> By the way, that's Dur Mrs. Byrne because I couldn't find another <laughs> extra to play this role. That is Mrs. Byrne right there. So he asked me to the laser show 
kind of thought maybe you wanted to be more than just friends. He has little stars and moons on his face because a laser shot them into his face. Because that's what a planetarium laser a plan does. If anyone's been to a planetarium before, it's just one white screen. And then they turn off all the lights and they just burn holes in the roof. <laughs> I don't think it was stupid. I think it was sweet. Really? Yeah. But you know I'm too old for you, right? There's actually somebody else I'm interested in. Hey, Echo, you're here early. Did you take the bus? I like your shirt. Hey, Adam. <laughs> oh, Adam! Play along, genius. It was one of the greatest nights of my life. Remember this. Hey guys. How's everyone doing? Is everyone okay? Actually illegal in real life too. Prison. Horrible for the actor. And Disney was like, I'll take 20 <laughs> pounds. Disney was like, <laughs> Disney said, their chops. <laughs> no one in the room stopped it. No it went through the writing team, then the director, the, for the producers, the actors, the actor's parents. The cable company. And then the children's eyeballs. And it went. <laughs> Like the laser show, doink, <laughs> into their brains. And then the parents just went, I don't hear it. We were putting it on there. We were like, should we even show this or should we blur it out? Like, I, not not being funny. We were like, should we blur it out? Are that's... we showing something that's illegal? Hey, Adam. I was wondering if you're free after school. Huh? And then she likes him now. Because older woman kissed him, that's illegal. Get the girl. The moral of the story is don't cheat on your boyfriend. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. She kissed that kid. Derby killed somebody to make sure this didn't happen. <laughs> and it did. Mission five. Now that we're all traumatized, we're gonna talk about some funny stuff in the show. There are quite a few things about the show, as you've probably seen in the clips we've showed so far, that are so nonsensical that it just like boggles your mind. Here are a few things that are canon in the Mr. Young universe. Dang has three additional mouths on his stomach due to him participating in medical research studies. He can also drink, taste, spit, and speak out of these mouths as if they were on his face. They go to actual space and Mr. Young drives the rocket ship. They time warp a cave girl to the present. Mr. Tater might be his dad. Isn't there somewhere else we could go to kiss? Come on. This is exciting. Um, and also there's a robot that Adam made and he attempts to take over the school and has a toaster as a butt. Mm. This is some of the best butt toast I've ever had. Insinuating that he's had butt toast previously, so that. <laughs> Someone said, it's burnt. <laughs> Visibly burnt. So there's something that's really, really annoying in, in the Mr. Youngiverse. People can't tell the difference between somebody dressed up as an animal or a creature and an actual creature. There's no denying whether or not that Slab is a cat when he has cat ears on. He's a cat now. <laughs> Meow. The old familiar weevil hive, which being a weevil, I have been to many times before. There's our beloved queen. <laughs> There's weevils crawling in the floor, so we know what weevils are. But the queen weevil is an actual weevil, but she is dressed in a similar costume and is also a human. That's a nightmare. The abominable snowman thing is also a nightmare to me because in this universe, it is canon that there are mythical creatures and they do live among them. And they're trying to be cheeky in this episode by saying, oh, this person's just so stupid they believe that Slab is the abominable snowman. <laughs> However, an actual Cyclops really does exist in this universe Cooking up some, cooking up some thoughts. So, there's one thing that is insanely consistent in the Mr. Young universe, the MYU, and that is Cyclops brand. Every single product in the universe has Cyclops brand on it. They specifically did that on purpose. They relabeled everything, every juice, every can, every box of cereal, everything is Cyclops brand. And this all leads to the penultimate episode where finally meet him face to face at Cyclops Industries or whatever, and he's a real Cyclops. I need to have a meeting with my secretary. <laughs> Was that a wink? Yes! <laughs> also just clicked on a random part of this video and didn't realize that there was a sexual In joke. In you and no. 
There, this means that there's mythical creatures that live among humans, and no one can tell the difference between a human and an animal, which means that no one knows what anything is. Anybody could just put on anything and they transform in front of your eyes. If I put on, like, bunny ears and I went hop hop in this universe, I am a bunny. No question about it. I'm a bunny. They're so graceful and majestic. To the actors out there, I have a lot of love for you. We had to show them. Guys, guys. Because you stuck with us for this long, <laughs> tiny anecdote with this. We went to the grocery store one day after finishing the last episode of Mr. Young. And Mr. Young was there. I'm in the bagel aisle and Joe runs away from me, like darts. And wait, I, was, wait, wait. I thought I was scared that something had happened. And I finally go and find you. And Joe is tapping this guy on, a sh on his shoulder. He turns around and I swear to God, guys, my soul left my body. I was more starstruck than I've ever been in my entire life. For like a week, Joe and I were like, I've never felt this good. <laughs> I, it was like we discovered something new about ourselves. Like, I felt like I had the power to just make anything in the world happen. <laughs> yeah. I was like, so I can just make things up. That, you wanna talk about manifesting? This right here is a prime <laughs> example that manifesting is real. Tap him on the shoulder, he turns, he looks me in the eyes. And I swear a little tear dropped that day. I, I literally felt like I was like, this is not possible. Like I'm dreaming. This was real. This actually happened. We met him in real life and he was very sweet. And what do you guys think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you've watched this show, please comment down below or you love this show still. Let us know how jail is, honestly. <laughs> we want to know what it's like behind bars. One of my favorite things to do in Mr. Young is to not even watch the episodes. It's actually just to go and click on an episode and then click three fourths of the way through and find the image that's completely out of context and then try to explain it in my own mind. It's kind of like Star Wars. You start off with Darth Vader existing and then we go back and we try to figure it out later. <laughs> yeah.